Hello you beautiful nuggets. So if you've seen my previous video you may know that I have recently had emergency surgery in a life-threatening situation. It was traumatic but I'm alive and that's what matters. If you follow me on Instagram you've probably followed the whole journey because I documented everything and it's been amazing to share it all with you guys. So I asked on my Instagram today if you guys had any questions you wanted me to answer in a YouTube video and I have a nice little list right here which I'm going to answer for you. So let's hop right in. Oh, actually before we do that, just go back and watch my previous video about the surgery that I had. Otherwise, none of this is going to make sense. Question number one, what causes cecal volvulus and is there something which we can do to avoid it? So this is the most common question. It happens randomly. It can happen to anybody. It happens spontaneously. So there's certain things which can predispose you to it. Um, it happens quite a lot in young babies, happens quite a lot in old people. It's pretty rare in people of my age. I am slightly, slightly tiny little bit more likely, likely for it to happen because I'm tall, which means that my intestines are a little bit longer, which gives them more space to twist. But yeah, it just happens to anybody. So there's not really anything you can do to prevent it sorry to tell you that but if it happens just catch it early and then you'll be all right just get a bit of surgery and you'll be fine why is it going to take you three months to recover is it your bowel that takes all the time your abdomen etc 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 so the three month recovery mark is like a basic guideline for when i should start exercising again and the reason why it's going to take three months is not because of my bowels so much my bowels are working they started pooing like a trooper like three or four days post-surgery so my bowels are working and they're functioning normally now I'm 13 days post-op and I feel like my bowel is doing what it needs to do if you know what I mean it's my abdomen because as I said in my previous video they've chopped me up from here to here so I have a huge basically slice down the middle of my abdomen in the middle of my muscles which basically hold my core together so yeah I struggle with like using my core and moving around quite a lot and also i had a massive surgery i was under anesthetic for three hours or more so yeah basically my body just needs three months to recover from the trauma but mostly for like everything that's been sliced under here to come back together and knit itself together and yeah i'm basically at a higher risk of things like hernias etc etc over the course of the next three months so i just need to really make sure that i don't push myself too hard how do hospitals in the maldives compare to hospitals in the uk very interesting question i actually haven't had surgery in the uk haven't had like emergency surgery or anything in the uk so i can't compare it directly but i did used to work in the nhs and i did used to work in hospitals and i can say that the hospitals in the maldives were great and i'd say there's like clear differences in terms of like the qualities of the beds and stuff like the beds were a little bit falling apart but besides that the actual care which i got and the professionals that i was treated by were amazing like the staff were incredible my surgeon was fantastic the actual care was great so yeah i'd say like I'd say it was absolutely fine. I think it was not like significantly different. The only thing that was a bit awkward is that in the in the hospital that I was in, ADK hospital, they don't provide food for the people who are staying in the hospital. So I had to source food for myself, even though I couldn't walk. But luckily I had Stefan out there who got me food. Um, so yeah, luckily I also didn't have to eat for like seven days because <laughs> I was having surgery. So yeah. It was, yeah that's anything that was a bit awkward i had to get my own food next question are you in pain now no so i stopped pain medications literally like four days post-op they wanted to give me more but i was just like i'm not in pain i'm not in any pain anymore so please stop giving me pain medications <laughs> so yeah i stopped taking pain meds like ages ago over a week ago i don't really have any pain the only pain i have is like when i'm in bed and i'm rolling over and i have to use my core as well as my upper body to like move me around in bed that feels quite uncomfortable on my abdomen because obviously it's been torn apart um but yeah besides that like no pain are you honestly okay you seem to be so positive or is it just a brave face i genuinely am positive I feel like on my Instagram I've shown the whole journey and I've been very positive throughout. There's only been one day, which was a few days ago, where I had a bit of a meltdown and I cried a lot. But that was my only day when I've cried. That was the first time I cried post-surgery. I have genuinely been feeling so positive and so happy and so determined to like 
have a positive, enjoyable recovery, that's just genuinely how I felt. I haven't felt down yet. It may happen, but honestly, I just think to myself, like, look, it happened to me. There's nothing I can do about it. It's not my fault. It happened spontaneously. So I might as well just deal with the cards which I've been dealt and make the best of a bad situation. And I honestly think that having a positive mindset does support recovery. So I'm just trying to take every day as it comes. And this is not just a brave face. I genuinely have only cried once. That Well, that day I cried like five times, but I've only cried one day. <laughs> that was my one day of crying. And other than that, I've been fine. I've been positive and happy. What have you learned about yourself from this experience? I have learned that I'm very positive. <laughs> Definitely I've learned that I'm very positive. I just didn't know how I was going to like ever handle a situation like this. I think situations like this can make or break a person. It can either send you into a downward spiral of feeling very sorry for yourself, which I think is quite a natural thing to feel, or it can make you feel stronger and more resilient and make you more determined to fight back. And I'm very lucky to say that I just have been very positive and determined ever since this happened to me. So I'd say I've just learned that I'm stronger than I think and I'm more positive than I think and like I can come back from anything. How did the pain progress when it initially started? So I did explain this in my previous video but it started with just some little cramps thinking I was constipated but within probably three or four hours it was excruciating pain, pain which I imagine would be worse than what childbirth is like, can't speak from experience but the pain was very 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 bad, very bad. How has this experience changed your view on your life? I would say that it has made me so grateful, one, to just be alive, and also two, to have a healthy body. I have personally, I don't know if you've ever known somebody have a serious operation, I've bounced back so quickly from this operation. And my surgeon said to me, like, when he was operating on me, my body was so healthy. When he untwisted my bowel, it just went pink again and all the blood flowed straight through it. And he was like, wow, her bowel is so healthy. My actual recovery, like I was walking the day after my surgery. Some people it takes them seven days to walk post-surgery. So I just feel like I'm so grateful for the fact that I had a healthy body prior to all of this as that has definitely helped support me in my recovery so far. And another thing it's changed my perspective on is it's just made me realize like people, including me before this, just take for granted the ability to walk and the ability to be outside and the ability to just have a healthy body and the ability to work out. I'm not going to be able to work out for three months. Damn, I wish I'd appreciated working out more when I could work out. So if you can work out, you're a damn lucky person. So please, please, please enjoy moving your body because not every single person is as lucky as you are. Like I can't move my body for the next three months. So please enjoy your workouts. That's definitely something I've learned. What about your work and your job? Are you going to lose the partnerships that you have because you can't do fitness for the next three months? Well, fingers crossed, I don't lose my partnerships. My agent said that everybody's been very understanding of the whole situation. I think the fact that I almost died means people tend to be quite sympathetic. Um, but yeah, I feel like nothing, I've had no bad news from my agent yet. Fingers crossed people are gonna stick with me and just wait until I'm a little bit better. But work-wise, obviously I can't do quite a lot of my job, so I can't do like any fitness focused stuff, but I'm just gonna take this opportunity to focus on other areas of my career. I'm gonna work on like sustainability stuff. I'm gonna work on maybe recipe based stuff. Might try and do a recipe ebook. Don't hold me to it. It depends, but that's an idea I had. So yeah, I just feel like I'm just gonna shift my workload towards other things. Like right now I can't really work properly because I don't have much energy. Hopefully in a few weeks I'll be back to myself and I'll be able to do like more consistent laptop work because right now I haven't got the brain capacity to focus on my laptop for that long. But yeah, basically I'm self-employed. I work for myself. I can pick and choose what I wanna do for my job. I'm just gonna have to put fitness on the back burner for a while and focus on other things. I'm just gonna jump back to that question about am I in pain now? Yes, one little thing. I had lots of needles put into me, lot, many needles, many, many needles, um, all at my arms and different veins. And I had one needle put here and this needle leaked and it leaked fluid into my hand. And my veins and my hand is still sore. Like this vein here, when I touch it, oh, still sore, still painful. So that's the only pain that I've got. This vein here that goes through my hand, that's painful. <laughs> okay, next question. Are you worried about not exercising for three months? In short, not at all. It is three months out of hopefully an 80 year plus life. I genuinely don't care. It's three months out of my whole life. 
and me taking these three months to rest is going to mean I have better long-term health. So why the hell would I not rest and enjoy resting? I just feel like, in the nicest way possible, people need to get perspective. Like, not being able to train for a few days or a few weeks or even a few months isn't that big of a deal because ultimately I need to do it for my health. I just don't care that much. Just don't care. <laughs> Are you worried about your scar and do you have a belly button? So when they first unveiled my scar to me, it was quite scary because it was like, wow, that's very big and I don't have a belly button. Um, because at that point, <clears throat> I didn't have a belly button. They'd stitched it all together and my belly button just didn't seem to exist. But since they've taken the stitches out, I do now have a belly button. It's a bit of a weird looking belly button, but I've got one. Um, but I'm not actually worried about the scars. I have two little scars and one big scar. And I kind of just feel like they're just a sign that I got through a really tough time. And I think they're pretty badass. So I'm not going to be ashamed of getting my scars out. In fact, I'm going to get them out with pride. Did you have travel insurance? How did you handle all of the bills, etc, etc? So I had a top tier travel insurance. Because I'm somebody who does a lot of travel and I do quite adventurous activities, I had high level travel insurance with all hazardous activities, all the excess waivers, everything on it because I didn't want to take any second chances and thank God, thank God, because it would have cost me about eight grand or more to pay for my surgery and pay for all the care that I had, probably much more than eight grand, but I feel like that's like a low estimate. So yeah, Travel insurance saved my back. They were an absolute nightmare to work with and they're still being a nightmare to work with in terms of certain things. But they have paid for all my medical bills and they have paid for economy flights home and they have paid for certain things, but they're also just a little bit awkward and a little bit annoying. But they have covered the vast, vast majority of stuff. So I cannot, cannot, cannot emphasize the importance to you of getting travel insurance, get it get it. What is your UK care plan now that you're home? So I'm going to go to a surgeon, a private surgeon. I'm going to have him check everything that's going on, have him look at my bowel, have him look at everything that's happening. Just check up on me basically because I want to make sure that everything's functioning well and that my wound is healing well, etc, etc. I'm also getting a physio who can do core work, who can do Pilates work down the line and who can also do scar management because I need somebody who can not only like build up my core strength again and like make sure my body's functioning well but also somebody who can manipulate my scar and my tissue to prevent any adhesions etc etc. So surgeon and physio that's my two people oh i also have a dietitian my friend helen is my dietitian because i have to follow a specific diet which i'll tell you more about in a minute so yeah dietitian physio surgeon that's my team have you had any weight loss so i had to weigh myself and tell my dietitian how much weight i'd lost and i hadn't weighed myself for a long time before this but yeah i've lost i've lost a significant amount of weight um, which is to be expected when you don't eat for about seven or eight days so yeah, I've lost a lot of weight and my appetite doesn't really exist yet, but I'm making a conscious effort to eat more food and try and stretch my stomach back to where it was so that I'm not going to lose any more weight. So yeah, I'm on it. How did you manage all the pain that you had without taking chemicals? I just found this question really funny, so I just thought I'd put it in. I took every chemical they would physically give me. I was begging them for more chemicals. I was like, please give me more drugs. Give me more, 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 more. Because I was in so much pain. And at that moment, I didn't care about chemicals. I just cared about the pain going away. So yeah, I just took all the drugs they would give me and more. So that's the honest answer to that one. <laughs> So last question is, what is your diet like now? And as I said, I have a dietitian called Helen and under her advice, I'm on a low fiber diet for the first four weeks post-op. And that is basically just to allow my bowel to have a bit of a rest. Low fiber food is much more easy for your bowel to digest. So yeah, basically being easy on my bowel for the first four weeks with low fiber food, which is basically white processed foods and certain fruits and vegetables, but like my diet is very beige right now and I'm not complaining because I had a donut for my mid-morning snack today and it was great. But yeah, in a few weeks I should be able to bring my fibre uptake slowly up, 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 back to my normal fibre intake which is just like a balanced diet with moderately fibrous food, just like a normal diet. I'll be back on a normal diet in like hopefully a month of back on my normal diet. So yeah, that is it. That is all the questions that I had for my Instagram. I hope that you guys enjoyed hearing a little bit more about my experience with my emergency surgery. And I'm gonna try and keep documenting things for you. So let me know in the comments down below what you want to see. Do you wanna see what I eat in a day? 
do you want to see me going to my physio appointments like what do you want to see let me know all right guys have an amazing day and i love you loads give this video a cheeky thumbs up if you liked it and i'll see you soon bye